All right, we are learning in this book, Safer, book in Hebrew, a book is Safer. We're learning this in the Safer, which is called Torah Or. It was written by the first Rebbe of Chabad, Rebbe Shneur Zalman, about 250 years ago. <clears throat> and um, <coughs> so he explains the, the deepest ideas in the Torah and how they are really relevant to us. Something like a person, you know, a person, what's the most really important part of a person? When it really comes down to it is soul. You know, as soon as a person's soul is gone, so I mean, you know, let's superficially at least, he's just a dead body, just like a dead cat or something like that. You know, there's no special worms for people or the you know, same worm that eats dead cat, eats a person. So, so the body is not, is not the main thing of a person. We see the main thing of a person is a soul. Nevertheless, our main attention throughout our whole life is given to our body. And there's a justification for that according to the Torah also, but let's just, I mean, in the Torah, we see there's all these laws about, you know, monetary laws and damage laws and marriage laws, talking about the body. But nevertheless, we cannot <clears throat> I just ignore the soul. And the same thing with the Torah. The Torah there's the body of the Torah, all the words, and also the ideas and the laws. But there's also the soul of the Torah. The soul of the Torah is our attitude, our love, our value. <clears throat> what do we really value? What are we afraid of losing? Fear. What's what's really valuable to us that we were afraid to lose? What is really something precious to us that we are, that we have, that we love? <clears throat> so in order to know that, we have to know a little bit. Uh, about God, because God, he's the one, he's not just ga gave the Torah a long time ago, he's giving the Torah right now. And he's giving his will is expressed in every word and wisdom and every word of the Torah, <clears throat> just like the first day he gave it, because God is eternal and the Torah is eternal. And the Jewish people are eternal. And our job is to make the world eternal, physical World, but you can't do it unless you at least something get excited about it. There's, and that's what the idea of this Hasidut is for. So as we've said so many times before, <clears throat> one of the main messages of Hasidut is that everything that's in the Torah is inside of us. So obviously that implies something spiritual because, you know, you can't find a little Yitzhak, you know, you take an x-ray or something or an ultrasound. Oh, there's a little Yitzhak running around inside of you and a little Yaakov. So it must be something spiritual in our soul, which we have totally overlooked our soul. We pay almost no attention to it. And how much more to the different aspects of our soul. So now the Rebbe is trying <clears throat> to get us into this aspects of the soul. Okay, now what is the, what, what are we talking about our soul? We're not just talking about when you go to heaven and these different aspects of, you know, astral projection or something, whatever. We're no, we're talking about serving God. We're talking about being a servant of God. Forget about what you receive Forget about going to heaven. Forget about new knowledge and experiences and, and you know, out of the world and the projections, whatever you get. <clears throat> and looking into the, you know, the, the ancient wisdom of the, you know, the mystical, esoteric, occult, something. We're not talking about all that stuff. We're talking about how to serve God. And God is your creator. How to serve. There's nothing more healthy than that. There's nothing more, how do you say, practical than that. God is creating everything. Right? The whole world is a big creation by God, and he wants us to serve it. That's really you know, down to earth. There's no more down to earth than that. That's the whole earth. <laughs> so we're supposed to be thinking about how to serve God, what to do. Mostly people think about themselves, which, you know, justly so, we're being bombarded all the time with these advertisements and all sorts of you know, lewd uh, the temptations and scary things. Uh, tricks, you know, it's going to be this, the corona and you got to, there's going to be a global warning. You're always afraid of yourself. So you have to get out of this thing about thinking only about yourself and at least a little bit to be able to think about the creator. <clears throat> when you start thinking about the creator, then you start realizing, hey, maybe I should also start talking about the creator. And then you, maybe I should do something for the creator. And maybe I should start feeling the creator is so important and he's, you know, not my next door neighbor. He's creating me right now. huh? It's pretty good. Pretty close. Pretty amazing. 
So says the Rebbe, there's two ways of serving God. One way of serving God is like water. The other one is like fire. Actually, there's a lot of ways, but like water, that's like Abraham. Like fire, that's like Yitzchak. It says Yitzchak, what, is the, what causes this fire? A tremendous love for God, especially this is found in the soul of every Jew. Now, Jews are different from everybody else. It's a very, very basic axiom of all this stuff and their axiom of the creation. Jews are essentially different from everyone else in the world. How? Because every Jew inherited from Abraham a tremendous love of God. Love of God. Every normal person, but Jews are also normal people. They like money, they like security, they like pleasure, they like whatever they people, whatever they like. Right? They have their fears, they have their this. Jews also have that. But Jews also, in addition, have this thing called the godly soul or the Jewish soul. And that godly soul loves God. It feels God, it feels how great God is, how good God is, how close God is. How infinitely play how much God loves us. That's Abraham. That he, we feel how much God loves us. Then there's love like fire. Like fire is, we just want to get closer to God. We want to change the whole world and make it closer to God. That's like Yitzhak. <clears throat> Says King Solomon that all of the waters of the world cannot put out this love that Yitzhak has. All the waters in the world. Mayim Rabim Loyak Bulukhabot. What is it? Mayim Rabim I forgot the sentence. Brig, huh? that's the name of this old Mayim. One second. One minute. One minute. Let me see. Don't. Let's, it's not going back. Why not? Well, that's a Mayim Rabim Loyachalot Lachabot at the Ava. That's the sentence. Big, great water cannot put up. Mayim rabim lo yichalu lachabot et ava. That's the sentence, right? It says, what, what does that mean? The mayim rabim the, are the multitude of waters. That's the pleasures of heaven. The highest heavens, highest he pleasures <coughs> of heaven, right? Which that puts all the pleasures, you know, like your, your, your home team wins the whatever is the soccer match or something like that. And the people go on the street and they're happy. Nothing could be more happy. Or your, you know, your ugly daughter gets married or something like that to a, a wonderful person. Oh, you're so happy and she's happy and you're happy and you're happy. Take all the happiness you want to in the world, roll it all together. It's nothing compared to the happiness that you get in heaven after in the afterlife in heaven. And that happiness does not satisfy the burning Jewish soul. <clears throat> the burning of the Jewish soul that it wants. The truth. And heaven is not the truth. It's a little ray of the truth, but it's not the truth. What does satisfy it? Doing the commandments. And that's the whole thing of Rivka. <clears throat> Rivka. <coughs> oh. <clears throat> and it says even more that this level of Yitzchak also has another implication to it. And that is the word of Tzchok. This is the pleasure which will be revealed in the future in the raising of the dead which that puts all this going to heaven and stuff like that in its small pocket it's like nothing the raising of the dead the importance of this physical world the dead will raise in this physical world that will be <clears throat> that's also Yitzhak but that's another aspect of Yitzhak that's in the, in the end it'll be that's why it says Yud it will be revealed I'm just doing sort of a summary of what we learned and how does this all brought about this is by means of Rivka, this is what we got up to yesterday. This is Rivka. Rivka, <clears throat> Rivka was Isaac's wife, Yitzchak's wife, right? So he said, Yitzchak on one end is this tremendous love for God, and Yitzchak is also the end final result of this tzchok and joy that we're going to have as a result of all of the work that we did in this world for the 5,000 whatever years that it's been here. <clears throat> and that will satisfy this tremendous burning. This well, how do we get this tremendous joy and which of the of the raising of the dead? That's by means of Rivka. What is Rivka? Rivka is going to mean the Torah and the commandments. We're going to see how. The word Rivka means like a, a, a team of axes, oxen, not oxen, huh? A team of oxen. They would put, in order to pull a plow or to pull a wagon or something like that, so they would put oxes together. You ever see it? I was in India for a while. You get these, you still go around over there and 
oxes, a big, huge ox with big horns, <clears throat> right, sort of wandering, wandering down the street, attached to the wagon. <clears throat> Nobody's afraid. Nobody does. You see something like that in in New York, everybody would run for for a cover, but it's a regular thing. Well, I guess the rich people used to have two oxes, and some people used to have three, and some people even used to have four. So that's a rivka, is a team of oxes. Sometimes there's three, and sometimes there's four. <clears throat> a parish, what does it mean, a team of oxes? Rivka is a team of oxes. What's it talking about? Chibur, joining. Rivka means to join things together. In this case, it happens to be oxes, but the idea is to, is to join. To join three or four animals together. And that's called a ravka, a ravka, <clears throat> ravka, rivka. The kahu binyan chayot amerkava. Let me make this bigger. Let me make this bigger. This is also the thing of the chayot amerkava, <coughs> the animals that are around the chariot or the throne of God. Huh? You ever hear the animals that are around the chariot or around the throne of God? Huh? You ever see a thing like that? Well, Ezekiel did see it, and so did Isaiah. They saw the chariot of the throne of God. What's this chariot of the throne of God? This is the spiritual configurations of creation, how they come down, before they come into this physical world. <coughs> There's all these cre creations up there, animal, the, the, the angels. And the angels are called by all these different names, but nevertheless, one of the names the angels are called is Chayot HaKodesh, the holy animals. Chayot HaKodesh. How do they call it in English? I don't know. But there's a name. <coughs> you know, the Keruvim are called cherubs. How do they get the 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 the, the, the Srofim are called flames? Huh? That's what they call them in English. What do they call the chayos? I don't know. Anyway, that makes no difference what they call them. And they call the book of Devor and they call it Deuteronomy. So you see how accurate the translations are. Here we go. So it says there are these the, the, Isaiah and Ezekiel saw these animals, a face of a lion, a face of a of a of a, of a, of a eagle. A face of an ox, ox, uh, ox around the chariot. Kishayim kolulim that they are all united together. Liot and achayot nosot at It says that the these animals lift up this throne, or they lift up the throne when they are united. These animals in the upper worlds, that's called a rivka. It's called a ravka, a, 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 a team of three oxes, which this includes chesed, gavura, tiferes. Chesed is love, Gavura is power, Tiferet is balance. We said before that's Abraham, Isaac, we didn't get up to Yaakov, but Tiferet, Yaakov is Tiferet. That's the face of the lion uh, that I told you, that's that's the, the side of kindness. Why the lion is kindness is not the place now to discuss. <clears throat> the face of the ox, that's Gavura, that's God's power, etc. Lifamim, but sometimes it is a group of four oxes. So this comes from a Mishnah, right? It's a Mishnah in Eruvin. It talks about certain spaces that you, between poles and things. Okay, we talked about it last time. Shehu, the chinas, penei adam. This is the face of man. There's there's four animals. One of them is, an, is a lion. One is an uh, ox, an eagle. And the fourth one is man. Right? It's the animal soul of man. Here, Adam, that's the chayus <coughs> merkava. These are the four Sometimes it says that the, this, this group, this team, is a four that's chesed, gavura, tiferet, and malchut. Malchut is the lowest of the ten, uh, uh, ten spherot and the, of the seven emotions. Okay, so what's going on over here? What's talking about? God is one. When we say God is one, it means that God is pure unity that includes all being, not just physical being, physical and spiritual, it's all one. And the reason <clears throat> that God does this is incomprehensible. But the fact is, that's the way it is, right? It's like, you know, why is, we've talked about this before, why does people? Why do people have only two eyes? 
one on the left. Why don't they have like one big eye on the top of their head that turns around or something? Like Ten eyes or like a, a fly. And there's all these little facets. And this is this is what God wanted, right? Why do you have so many bones in your legs and your hands and your this? That's what God wants. That's the way God. Nobody asks any questions. <clears throat> right? You learn medicine. You know, the operating table, and so one of the, 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 the says, okay, what? Why is it God put the heart? Why is the heart up here? Who says the heart is in the chest? Maybe the heart is in the leg. Let's try. A person that says that, they, they kick them out of medical school. Maybe to not, nowadays they won't kick anybody out, but could be. Nowadays they have the euthanasia killing people. Try, try the leg. Who cares? But the fact of the matter is, is that's not right. Somehow or other, for some reason, the heart is always in the chest. Why is it in the chest? That's the way God made the world. The same way is God made the world in a certain way. The Kabbalists and etc. they just investigate, try to unite with as much as possible as <clears throat> they can with these ideas, understand them. But the fact of the matter is, is that all of this creation, as in, infinitely complicated as it is, the spiritual worlds are in a way more complicated than the physical worlds. But even if we say, no, the physical world is, is sufficiently complicated, right? The whole the the digestive system of a you know dung beetle or something like that. Well, it's so complicated, it's incredible. So, <clears throat> the whole purpose of all this is that we human beings should have a little bit of an appreciation of the creator. That the creator is creating all this. And that's why he created physical worlds and spiritual worlds, because when we start understanding the physical worlds, then we understand that reality is not something that's below us like animals and plants and things like that, that we can understand. But it's also reality is above our understanding, like the angels and stuff like that. You can't understand those things. That's more real than we are. And, and, and that's only just an aspect of God. And the whole business is one big harmonious symphony of creation. But it's our job is to try to see the oneness in it. So that's this idea. Sometimes it says these animals that are around the chariot, which that's the source of all the life in this world. It says that <clears throat> the face of the man is the source of all humans in the world. And the face of the the, 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 uh, the lion is all the not kosher animals in the world. And the eagle is all the, the, the flying things in the world. <clears throat> it says all these things, as separate as they are, but in fact, they're all one. And by unifying them, you get a little bit of a picture of God's oneness. And God's one is why do we have to do it? Because we have, it's a commandment to love God. That same God that's creating all these angels and is one God, he's creating me and you. And he doesn't have to. He's creating an angel. And nevertheless, he's creating me and you and every human being in the world every instant personally. That's, that that makes really, that if anything makes no sense, that infinitely makes no sense. I mean, you know, I'm being created. What are you talking about? <clears throat> and not only I'm being, God is creating every one of the, the animals, he's creating everything individually, but they can't appreciate it. We can appreciate it. So that's what it says. Sometimes it's four, four. Sometimes that's chesed kabur. These are the upper emotions of God. As, as amazing as they are, they're just aspects of God. It's all unified. That's Rivka. Uh, 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 it's one team. Alter is a symbol of the rabbi say, Ha'avos, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they are also a Merkava. They are also a chariot. The, they have unified these levels of chesed, gabor, tiferet, of God's love, God's power, God's beauty. And King David, he was the fourth foot of this chariot. For the chariot, the, 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 the uh, what is it, the, the, the throne, the throne. He's the fourth. So sometimes there's three and sometimes there's four. But that's what it says in the Merkava, Yechezkel, in the <clears throat> chariot that Ezekiel saw that they're unified one to the other. That they're joined together by means of this, only this is when all these <coughs> angels are unified, and it says they lift up the throne. Who's sitting on the throne? God. Huh? That sort of wrecks the whole picture, doesn't it? We thought that God was creating everything. And that God had no form, and here is God is sitting on this throne. <laughs> what, what does that mean? So it says, what it means is these animals and things, they are the world of Bria, the, the Yetzira. And the throne 
is the world of Bria. And God sitting on the throne, that's the world of Atzilut. So nothing, none of this is to be taken in any way, literally, or even vaguely literally. But it's there. He saw it. Mishum, because all your days kalos chibur amidos, by means of unifying all of these emotions of God together, by means of this mit alim we can elevate and we also draw down from this high level. This gives God's ple- This gives God pleasure. And what unifies all of these animals around the throne? Our service in this world. It all depends on our free will. The whole world depends on our free will. Shesham, that over there, call amidos kalulim yachat. <clears throat> that in God's, the higher levels of God, everything is already one. That's, we just realized, it was revealing what there is. Alder is a, let me say, it's just that we talked about this before, but let me say, it's like a doctor, right? A doctor, a common person comes in and says, doctor, I have a pain in my side. The doctor looks and says, the person's got an appendix, right? His appendix is swollen up. And so he takes out the appendix, now the person is healthy. What happened? What, what happened over here? What happened? What did the doctor do? The doctor just revealed health. He just unified the person. The person, when he was sick, as his appendix stuck out, it wouldn't let him think. It wouldn't let him do anything. It pained. It hurt. It took up all of his attention. As soon as it wasn't separate, as soon as there was unity, then there was health. It's the same thing is with God. God created the world sick, separate. Everything feels itself. By us serving the creator of all this whole business, is that brings health, we're like a doctor, and it unifies everything so that individual things don't feel their <clears throat> in separateness. They feel their they feel their uniqueness, but not their separateness. So the heart acts like a heart, and the lungs act like lungs, and the, the, the eye like, like an eye, and the ear like an ear. Then everything is healthy. But as soon as the, the, the eye hurts, then the ear can't act like the ear, and the heart can't act like the heart. and Because you got the ear there, your heart. Your heartbeat has changed because of the pain. As soon as their health, then the, that's the way things are supposed to be. Al says similarly, you when we can understand is serving God. Keshiyesh when there is vechinasis kalos when a person is totally unified, love and fear, and an arousal of mercy on his soul. He feels how great God is, how infinitely grateful I am to God for His mercy on me that He's creating me. She heard the and that God. Energy came down as all these levels and created me. Zel and Nikra, this is called Rivka. This is what's called Ravka. This is a team of three, three. Namely, what? Chesed, Gavur, We feel God's love, we feel God's power, and we feel God's mercy or beauty. Same, same thing. That's unified. When we feel that, that's called a team of three axes. Shemidos, that the <clears throat> Emotions of the animal soul become refined from their naturalness. That's called klipas noga. They, from their nat- nature and naturalness. And they raise up to the creator of this naturalness. So then they can act properly. <clears throat> like the same thing as the person. When he's got a pain appendix, so his limbs cannot devote themselves to health, to themselves, to a purpose, to being a man. He's just like an animal. Right? He's just thinking about his pain all the time and he can't function. As soon as the first one is fixed, right, then <clears throat> the, the, is, the limbs of his body, suddenly they can give themselves over to something higher, right? To his family, to his surrounding, to improving the world. So that's called elevating, Klippat Noga means nature. Elevating that to the creator. And that's what we're supposed to do. How do we do that? By thinking, by changing our attitude, by changing. He nay behold, and somebody wanted this to be bigger, so I'll make it bigger. There we go. Oh, there I am. That's me. He nay. Where are we? What are you doing? The and this is the he nay. Oh, I said, the zeo, that's what it says in the Torah. Quote. This is a quote. He nay rivka yotzeit, that rivka came out. It says that. <clears throat> That when uh, Eliezer came to look for her, it says Rivka came out. Right? He saw her the first time. She yotzit me klipat noga, namely that she came out from nature, from klipat noga. To translate exactly, klipat noga means shell, klipa shell, and noga means shining. 
this whole world is a big shell that covers over God, but there's some of that shell <clears throat> is called impure, can't be uh, fixed up. And some of it's called noga. Noga means to shine. In other words, it has a potential to shine. It has a potential to be transparent. So we can see godliness through it. So that's what it means. Y y Rivka, this unification went out. She went out from being natural. And she transformed darkness to light. Right? Darkness to light. Like we say, it can be refined. Like, you know, cleaning your glasses. Clean off your glasses. They're all dark. You clean them up. All of a sudden you can see. Right? If you have for your glasses, you have two pieces of coal or two rocks or something, you can't clean them off. That's called impure clipper. But if your glasses are made of glass, then you can clean them off. You can see through them. That's the same thing as this whole world. This whole world is there's some things you can't refine and there's some things you can. And that was the thing of Rivka. The idea of Rivka is taking what can be refined, cleaning it off, unifying it, and transforming darkness to light. The world becomes a big, how do you say, a light show for of godliness. <clears throat> anyway, it begins, it begins like transparent glasses where you can see godliness. But we found me, and sometimes he shall arba arba, and sometimes you can refine the world in a way of four four, namely including also malchut, which that's the idea of not only refining your love and your fear, or what do you want, your power and your beauty, and feeling that giving that to God, but also what's called bittel, total surrender to God. The Kabbalah all and accepting the yoke. Avodat Evan, serving God not from love, or not only from love, or from fear, turning from bad, or from balanced beauty, but even when you don't have those things, you're serving like a, a, a servant. Because after all, you can't deny, I mean, we can't understand God. So, you know, you, as much as you love God, or you appreciate God, or you know how holy you are, but nevertheless, <clears throat> there's still a separate you. Remember, we're learning about that. We'll learn in a couple moments to serve God like a child, like a, like a child. <clears throat> a child knows the essence of God. Ki avoda, yira, the service of serving God, of love and fear. Ki avoda, I'm sorry, serving God and fear Fearing God, these are two separate commandments. Loving, fearing, serving God, like David, like King David, or having emotions to God, that's two separate commandments. Serving God is another commandment. That's what it says that Yitzchak was, how do you say, uh, giving pleasure together with Rivka, his wife. What do we say before that it says that Avi Melech looked from the window and uh, Yitzhak, we learned that yesterday in the Chumash class. Yitzchak told Avi Melech, Avi Melech was the king, <clears throat> that Rivka was his sister <clears throat> because he knew that they would kill him if they found out that she was his wife in order to get him. But if it was his sister, you know, maybe would, they could, he could avoid being killed. He could like talk to them, make a deal with them, <clears throat> and et cetera. And then God will take over. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it says that one day Abimelech looked out the window and he saw, according to Rashi, that he was having sexual relations with his wife, with Rivka. Other opinions also, but nevertheless, he was doing something enjoyable with Rivka, his wife. Says the Rebbe, let's take this, the, the, what, what the simple meaning is, the, the, the simple meaning, no doubt about it. But there, there can be arguments. But here, and there's no argument. We're talking about spiritual. Yitzchak, which is the upper which is the pleasure, which will be revealed in the future. How is this brought about? This is by means of Rivka, his wife. Namely, what does it mean? Birur, refining this physical world. And then if you remember, do you remember that Eliezer made this, <clears throat> when he made the wedding between Rivka and Yitzchak, that it's dealt with, with too much detail, apparently. In the Torah, this tremendous detail about what you, what Eliezer said and how he went, and he had difficulties, and he found her, and etc. And the, 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 sentence after sentence, paragraph after paragraph of this simple story, when there's whole laws which are learned from just one word. There's hundreds of laws sometimes that were learned from one law, one word, one sentence, one letter. It says why? So remember, we explained that the unification, the marriage of Rivka. And 
Yitzchak was the unification of ban and ma. Ban is the numerical value of animal, and there's all of the power of this world, and ma is the numerical value of man, Adam, that that's the upper man, the upper man. That's the unification of this world with God and God with the world. That's the Gamacha Behema. <clears throat> like we said before, that's by means of refining. So how do we get to this essence pleasure of God? By refining our animal soul. When it goes up to be the, this level of Rivka, that's this unification. Because below, everything is <clears throat> separated. <clears throat> if you look at the world from physical eyes, then it's a world, there's, a, there's no creator. But if you start thinking about the creator, then everything all of a sudden takes a whole different way of looking at things. And that's the idea of Rivka. That's the idea of Rivka, uniting the separation of this world. That gives God tremendous pleasure. That's a unique thing. That's a novelty. Uh, that's the talking monkey or something. And you see a person talking, it's no big deal. You see a monkey that talks, right? All of a sudden, what? This is amazing, right? The king is happy. Everybody's laughing. To take this physical world, an angel, right, praising God, eh, big deal. This physical world praising God, this is like the talking monkey or the talking bird or whatever. That's a big novelty, and it gives great pleasure. And this, that's this unification, making this world talk. That is like what Rivka does. She takes all the potential of the world and unifies it, and that gives God great pleasure. Okay, and because by means of this, but Tere Aina, she was able to go down to the well. <clears throat> but Timale Kadan, she filled up her her um, <clears throat> pitcher, Hainu, namely Sha'ali De Bekinas Biru, by means of refining and surrendering the animal soul only by means of doing that, a thing which is impossible to do. But we can do it with the help of God. We can do it, and we must do it. And when we do do it, al by means of halah azu, by elevating it, there is drawn down your read of amshach azu. This tremendous, <clears throat> you say, happiness of God is drawn down with timale kada that she fills her pitcher. Kada means her kad is a pitcher. Kad refers to also the twenty-four letters of the Torah. Huh? Because God put the Torah in the world in order to refine the world. But if we look at the Torah, just like any other book in the library, so which it also is. It's also a book in the library. You can go to any library and take it out. But if we look <clears throat> at the Torah in that way, then it's just part of the world. It's just part of this whole separateness. It's just another religion. But if we look at the Torah, we fill up the God. We fill it up with godliness, with the feeling of the creator of the world and the purpose of creation. And we feel that in every letter of the Torah, which in fact, that's what it is. And we feel that not only is it not a book in the library, but exactly not the library and all the books in the library are inside of the Torah. <clears throat> the, the whole entire world, the angels, it all comes from the Torah because the Torah is filled with godliness. It's God's word. That's what it means. It filled up the Torah. Then that unifies the whole world. <clears throat> we realize there's a chance. Here God put the key in the world. Here it is to open the door. The Torah, of course, it's not so simple. It's not like, you know, these Eastern religions, you know, you get, how do you say, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, what is it, illuminated, what's the word they call it? And anyway, <clears throat> you all of a sudden you are, you've reached this level, oh, I made it. It's a thing you always constantly have to be working at, constantly all the time. But nevertheless, the godliness, what does it do? It reveals more responsibility. It reveals more responsibility. The Torah is responsible. Responsibility to God is the essence pleasure of man. No greater pleasure than that, than to fulfill your responsibility, your obligation, your debt to the creator of the universe. Forget about what you, I'm going to get heaven. What do I, God is giving me everything right now. I'm dem demanding more, right? God is giving me everything that I've got. He's get the whole world giving me life. I want to raise and pay. I'm not going to know. <laughs> I'm giving you everything. What are you talking about? It's all free. And eh, not enough. Uh, well, the fact is, you, he, it's right. We are created in this world that we should want more. We should demand, but what we ideally should want more <clears throat> godliness to be revealed in the world. Kihine, because behold, all the Torah <clears throat> only deals with worldly things. Kamo, just like, just like. <clears throat> <clears throat> hmm. 
This was Truma, or Maisrot. Oh, what's Truma tomorrow? What is that? You're a farmer. This is only for farmers. If you read, if you have a, or if you buy from farmers. So you have to take Truma and Miser from your food. That's what God wants. Uh, God is very, very important. God is creating all these angels. All the angels are screaming out to God. And God <clears throat> is creating the worlds above the angels. And those are like nothing to God. God's creating the whole thing, right? And God says, oh, one, one minute, one minute. You there, Silverman, take one-tenth of your apples. You bought those apples? Take it. Well, God, really, God really cares about that. No, that's the main thing God cares about. The physical things in the world, that's the main thing God cares about, right? Well, it makes sense to you that God cares about the angels. He creates the angels. That makes sense. It doesn't make any sense that God creates anything, <clears throat> that God cares about anything. That The whole business makes no sense. This is above understanding. So it's no more difficult to understand that God cares about the angels than he cares about <clears throat> me taking my tithes from my food that I bought in the land of Israel. But semach in plants, vazira oritz, and how to plant in, in Israel, you can't plant uh, <clears throat> certain things together, kilayim, and the sacrifices in the holy temple, babali chayim, oh, that really makes no sense. In the holy temple, you had to bring a cow, you had to bring a, 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 a the, the, if you brought this, the wrong animal, you, you make a sacrifice, you brought the wrong animal, you brought it, it was too old, you brought it at the wrong time, not, no good. I mean, really, God cares about these things? Yes. Every detail God cares about. God cares about the, 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 the circulatory system of every frog in the Amazon desert, Amazon uh, forest. He cares about it. He cares, he's creating it. That's the same sign you create. <clears throat> that really makes it makes more sense to say it's just evolution and it's the laws of nature and the, the laws of this. Okay, but if you look at that, that also really doesn't make any sense. The whole idea of life is something that's precious. Nowadays in America, they're trying to say life makes sense. You can take people's lives, you can kill babies, no problem. Life is just you know, like batteries or something, they'll throw away the batteries. You know. But that that is, I mean, you listen, you certainly have that option. That's what the, the Nazis did, the, the, the communists did, for sure. No problem. Life is, you know, val valueless. Nothing is, nothing, there's no mystery. There's no more mysteries in the world. There's no more, life is not a mystery. Nothing is a, you have the option to say that. But Judaism and Abraham <clears throat> began it is saying, no, life is a miracle. And every instant of it is a miracle. And even more miraculous is the one who gives us life. And he's giving it all the time. <clears throat> and even more miraculous than that is why he's giving it to us. You can believe it or not. It takes. It's, this is belief. Right? You can't prove this. <coughs> <coughs> now, listen, in the universities, if they're busy trying to prove that a man can give birth, so you know th th you can prove anything. <laughs> There's nothing you can't prove if, if you know that. So you can prove anything. <coughs> so you know why? Why depend on proofs? The fact of the matter is, there is such a thing as faith, and even though it can be misdirected. But faith can also is it's a how do you say uh, it's a it's it's a, a valuable and also a valid tool to perceive the truth, <clears throat> and that's what he's saying. All these seemingly impossible to understand that God wants these animal sacrifices and all the commandments they're all physical. All this is taken from what's called nature, klipat nogen. By means of the commandments, we purify and we refine. The world, we do the impossible, and by means of this, it gives God pleasure and it draws down revelation of Ein Sof in the world. That I myself command you. That's the Anuchi that God revealed at Mount Sinai. That's the commandments. <clears throat> the physical commandments, that's Judaism. <clears throat> to make this world a blessed and a holy place. <clears throat> but so, well, that's what it means. That's what it means. Behold, I stand on of the well. Uh, um, Eliezer said, I am standing on this well. This is the well that Rivka went down to, the well, the well spring. And she filled up her kada, which says that's the Torah, is drawn from this. Anochi. <clears throat> 
I am standing. This is in the this is in this case, it's Eliezer speaking, but the Rebbe said, No, this refers to God. Anochi, the first word of the Ten Commandments. This is what's called steam of the call steaming, the concealed of all concealed, that from it is drawn down this Mayan, this wellspring, which that's the secret of the raising of the dead. Therefore, in order that there should be this drawing down of revelation of God, and this is what's going to satisfy, by the way, this, this <clears throat> love that King Solomon was talking about in the beginning. In order to do this, <clears throat> in order to reveal godliness in the physical world from nature, this is only by means of our refining our animal soul first. Shehi Gamkin, which also comes from nature. Sha'az then, Akhara Birur, after the elevation, <coughs> can be drawing down this revelation into the world. Okay, therefore, in Lonit na Torah, therefore the Torah was not given to the angels. Why, Mishum, God said, Klum Yetzer Hora Yesh Benech. It's a big midrash that says that when Moses went up on Mount Sinai, so the angels complained to God. Angels, it seems, have free will, and they were complaining to God. Certain angels, anyway. But it says the angels, <clears throat> and they were complaining to God. Hey, God, you're making a big mistake. You're giving him a big, 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 big mistake. You're giving the precious Torah, which is the secret of all creation, and you're giving it to man. You know what man is going to do? You know what he's going to do with the, to the Torah? I mean, he's going to defile everything that it says there. Give us the Torah. <clears throat> we'll keep the Torah spirit. Here we learn all these spiritual ideas, right? That Rivka is the spiritual level and Yitzchak is a spiritual level. And yet, we're, we're, the, we're those spiritual levels that it's talked about in Hasidut. We'll do the Torah. The Torah will be spiritual. And God said, oh yeah? <clears throat> what does it say in the Torah? Don't kill. You fellows want to kill? What does it say? Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Don't worship idols. You guys want to worship idols? Klum yetzer hor yesh benichem. You have any evil impulses? <clears throat> it's not relevant by you. Biro Eclipus Noga, refining the nature. As Hapka transforming darkness to light. I'm giving the Torah, the darkness will be transformed to light. And this is a very strange thing. I mean, it really doesn't make any sense. And I thought about it this morning a lot. <clears throat> but it's like the Rebbe said also. We did. For some reason in this world, there's a man gets a, drives a tremendous pleasure and satisfaction from victory. Huh? You see when two soccer teams play, you know, the, 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 the winning team, the, 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 the fans of the winning team, they go berserk. Boxing matches, multi-trillion dollars, people come to see who's going to win. Right? Who's going to win? Now, just imagine you had a soccer team and you played, you know, uh, you know the, the great professionals, and they played against you know, three-year-old children. So then your team would win for sure, right? Your team would, let's say the boxing match. You have this boxing match, a powerful guy, 300 pounds. He can kill a bull with one hand, no problem, right? And you put him up against a three-year-old child. So your guy for sure is going to win. Your team is for sure going to win. But you're not going to get any pleasure from it. The world was created with this principle in the world that victory over a worthy adversary is a very happy thing. Well, if you take the source of this higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, so it gets up to the essence of God. God gets a tremendous pleasure from, I mean, don't ask why he gets a pleasure, but also don't ask, nobody asks why I get pleasure when my team wins. It just does, you know, that all the, the tension is built up. In it. So God gets, because the, the source is God gets a tremendous pleasure when we overcome a worthy adversary. And our adversary is ourselves in most cases and the way we take the world <clears throat> is when we do defeat this adversary it's tremendous pleasure god himself gets tremendous pleasure therefore it's impossible that there can also be the angels they can't get this they don't have any worthy adversaries by the angels they don't have any <clears throat> it's like putting one team on the on the the, the 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 soccer field you know and they just score as many goals as possible and another goal, and another goal, 7,000 goals, and the crowd is all leaving. They all went home. There's nobody left, just the cleaning men are cleaning up to this. 
Nobody's going to wait. Who wants to see it? Who wants to see a thing like that? <clears throat> so God put us in this world to utilize this power of victory. <clears throat> and when we do it, and we transform darkness to light, here the difference is, though, is our job is not to defeat the opposite opposition. Our, our job is to transform the opposition. <clears throat> transform the opposition. And this the crowd would not appreciate. But God does appreciate. Look, and therefore, if it's impossible that there can be also by them, by the angels, this drawing down of the essence of God from Asher Anochim at Savachah, from God's Anochi, from God's essence. Afal Pi, even though Shavadai, certainly there is revealed godliness to the angels. But this godliness, which is revealed to the angels, is the angels are screaming up. And says so sometimes they go up and the angels come down. This is, they get the pleasure from the river that comes out of Aden. That's something like the pleasure that we get in the world to come. And this it says, Hayoshevet Beganim Chavirim. This is the angels. It says, King Solomon also said, that you people who sit in the, Places of learning says the angels come down and listen to your voice because when Jews do the commandments, they draw, draw down a higher level of godliness. But the angels also draw down godliness. Right? They're screaming up, they get out. <clears throat> but the revelation, which is the, by means of our working in this world, the terror to Aina, to go down to this wellspring and fill up the Kad, which is the Torah from the essence of God, is not drawn down to the angels. This is only drawn down the Mata Davka. <clears throat> and therefore, the rabbis say, Atin Tzadikim, by the Tzadikim, that the angels will call them holy. Now we're saying the angels are holy, Kadosh Kadosh. In the future, the angels will call us holy because we did the impossible. We defeated the dragon, who is what ourselves, our own selfish impulses and urges and certainties. We refined them. Things that no angel could possibly do. We did it. And there, that's why the that will bring the raising of the dead into this physical world. Because the physical world, that's the most important thing. That's what gives God this essential pleasure. As we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. <clears throat> it's a continuation. That's is the multitude of waters. That's all. Okay, we'll talk about this tomorrow. Now let's do the Devar Malchut. Went a little bit over here, but that's all right. Here we go. <clears throat> Actually, we started late also.